Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harlan Quinn. I don't think it was really a Birds of Prey movie. This was really a Harley Quinn movie that the Birds of Prey just happened to be in in the last 10 minutes. Starring Margot Robbie, Rosie Perez, who is timeless, Mary Elizabeth Winston, who was pretty good, pretty good, um, and Ian McGregor. Ian McGregor. Um, the, McGregor plays the villain, the Black Mask. There's some, there's some mistakes in this movie that I can't help but to bring up. Um, I, I don't know why I'd call them mistakes, but I'd say maybe missteps. The movie talks about how villainous McGregor is, right? But, and he's the Black Mask, who's a major villain in the Marvel, uh, DC Comics. And, but they don't explain the mask. It's just things are happening. Stuff is going on. He doesn't have a mask. And then sooner or later, something happens and it makes him so mad, he goes into a secret room and takes this mask out and puts it on. But they don't say why. He just, mm -hmm. he's just like, oh, here comes the mask. And he puts it on. It doesn't really explain why he's doing that. The Huntress. They explain why she's so tough and good with that bow. Why she wants revenge. It's, it's really small, but it explains it. They don't explain why um, Harley Quinn is so tough. She uses a baseball bat. It's her weapon of choice. She wasn't like on a baseball team or nothing like that when she was a kid. Um, if you watch the Harley Quinn cartoon, she was a gymnast. That's got nothing to do with a baseball bat. You can explain why she's bouncing and jumping all over the place, but why is she so tough? I mean, she could take a punch from a full grown 250, 275 pound man, hit her right in the face, bam! She'll take that, she'll eat that, and then catch you with that bat, man. Set your beard on fire. So they don't explain that. And I'm, the whole time I'm like, okay, well, finally, somebody's gonna explain why she's as tough as she is. I mean, she was a psychiatrist a couple years ago, and now. She's like the baddest chick in DC. In the comics, she actually fought Wonder Woman one time with a bat. She's just a, she's just a woman. On the flip side, they have Cassandra Cain, um, who is in the comic books, a woman that's in incredible shape. And she's a phenomenal fighter. In fact, she's the daughter of Lady Shiva, who's probably in the top three of the best hand-to-hand -hand combatants in all of DC. She raised her to be an assassin. And she was like, she, she's dangerous. She could fight Batman, she's super dangerous. In fact, she grows up to become uh, one of the Batgirls. She's Batgirl for a long time. Um, if I'm correct, and I think I am, she was the first Batgirl to actually get her own book. So she was, she was, you know, she was a big deal. She was a big lottie da. Here, she's a short, chubby girl that's a pickpocket. And I'm thinking, why did they even use her name? It didn't make any sense to use her name. This is like, if they were like, oh, it's Clark Kent. But he's not actually Superman. He's just another dude. Why well, use the name of a character that has this particular background if you're not going to use that particular character's background. It didn't make any sense to me. The whole time I was like, oh, they just don't know. She's dangerous. She's going to kill everybody in the room. Because she could have. Everybody that was all those other birds of prey, Cassandra Kane could probably kill all of them in just a couple of minutes if they all attacked her at once. But this was just a little chubby kid. I, I didn't get it. I don't know why they did that. Maybe they're planning on Harley Quinn part two and they'll reveal her to be super dangerous. I don't know what's going on with that. That was kind of weird to me. Um, it's actually a Harley Quinn movie, not a Birds of Prey movie. The Birds of Prey don't even get together until like the last couple of minutes of the movie. And 
they don't call themselves birds of prey until like the last few seconds or something like that in the movie. It's it's a Harley Quinn movie. They should just call it a Harley Quinn movie. You spend at least a half an hour in Harley Quinn's brain, you know, which is just a bag of cats. You know, in the movie, she's like, let me take a minute and tell you about this. And then you're inside her brain as she remembers stuff, you know, in crazy Harley Quinn vision. Um, but anyway, what had happened was Cassandra Kane, who was for some reason a pickpocket, <clears throat> steals a valuable item that gets the big bad looking for her because they find out she's got it. Black Canary gets involved in it. Cassandra, to chase Cassandra Kane, um, Harley Quinn gets involved in it because she wants to save her neck. So she's got to find it. Everybody's, for different reasons, are trying to kill the bad guy and also trying to find this little girl. Both of them, for different reasons, they're doing essentially both things. So that pulls them together and they become a group. They're like, hey, let's be a group, like the Beatles or whatever. They don't say that, but that's basically how it went. This movie had a lot of action fight scenes in it. Really good fight scenes. When Harley Quinn was by herself in the fight scenes, um, there's a police station fight scene. That was really good. That was really, really good. Um, epic, even. But then they all fight together. And that took me back to Adam West Batman TV series where they would punch each other and be bam, pow, crash, boom, over their head. You'd see the words when they would hit the villains or sometimes when the villains would hit them. The way of the camera angles and the, the excessive amount of color in the movie took me right to Adam West. I think it was Technicolor is when, you know, they invented Technicolor and everything was out like that and all of the colors were like pow, pop. It took me to that. The fight scenes, the way they fought, one person hitting them and ducking and another person coming, it reminded me a lot of Adam West, Batman. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that that's where it took me. That's where this movie took me. If I were dissecting this movie and they were like, look, hey man, we need to make another one. What do you think? I'd say, get rid of everybody except the Huntress. The Huntress was crazy dangerous. And except for like trying to give her a, a couple of comedy lines, which kind of hit, but not really. Except for that, she was like super dangerous. She could be crazy. Her story was they can go into more detail with. And the way she was like knocking people off, that was good. I That was, to me, that was like the best part of the movie. Some people are gonna say it's Harley. That's cool. You know, different strokes, different folks. I think the best part of the movie was the Huntress. Really, I mean, clearly it was Harley, because Harley was in 96% of the entire movie. But the scenes that had the Huntress killing people, I was like, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, give me some more of that. I wanted more of that than I wanted more of Harley. I saw more of Harley. I wanted more Huntress. Cassandra Kane, you know, uh, Rosie Perez, cute though she is. I, I, I mean, she had knocked out twice, I think, three times, something like that. She, she kept getting, she got beat up pretty good, but I wasn't invested in her character. I wasn't invested in any of them, to be completely honest. But I wanted more of Huntress than I wanted of anything else. So that's my take. Huntress good, movie, eh. In fact, I'm gonna give this movie six bags of popcorn. Man, that's right, six bags of popcorn. That's all I got to say about that. If you've seen the movie or you want to talk DC, let's talk about it in the comments. And as always, if you like the video, if you like the content, subscribe. And then like.